What happens to water in space? Short answer, this. Very cool and very weird. Instead of spilling everywhere, it holds together in these little globs. And apparently you can even hit them around like you're playing tennis. And if you're wondering what would happen if you blow into a bottle full of water, the water stays together in one blob, flows up the straw, out of the bottle, and covers your face, which is kind of terrifying. So why exactly does all of this happen? Well, all of that floating business is to do with gravity, or the lack of gravity, also known as microgravity. That's something people experience on the International Space Station, which looks like this. It's basically where people or objects appear to be weightless. Although quick little nitpick, it's sometimes referred to as zero gravity, which is technically misleading. Because a small amount of gravity can be found everywhere in space, even if it's just a tiny, tiny amount. Now, the reason that the water clumps together in shapes instead of just spilling everywhere has a bit to do with something called surface tension. You may have already noticed that back on Earth, water acts as if it's got a thin little film on top of its surface. It's the reason why these little tiny fellas called water skippers can walk on water. If you look closely, you can actually see the surface stretching down under their weight. It's also why water droplets clump together and can be taller than the surface they're on. For example, this droplet on a leaf is taller than the ladybird and doesn't break apart even after the bug takes a chug. This happens because the molecules that make up water are attracted to each other. And like all good mates, they cling together and it takes a bit of force to break through that. Here's a closer look at surface tension in slow motion. When this droplet hits the water, the surface of the water stretches and bounces the drop back into the air. Pretty cool. So, back to the ISS. Because the stuff on board doesn't have to deal with the strength of gravity that we have here on Earth, there's nowhere near as much force trying to pull the water molecules apart. So those water molecule mates can stick together, have a bit of fun, and make cool shapes like this. And if you're wondering why water in microgravity often takes the shape of a sphere, it's because when the molecules pack in tight, that particular shape has the smallest surface area on the outside. So now that we've looked at what happens to water in the comfy confines of the ISS, what happens when it goes out into the dark nothingness of space. Liquid water is pretty much Goldilocks. It needs just the right conditions to stop it from boiling and becoming a gas, or freezing and becoming a solid. Freezing obviously happens when it's really cold, and boiling happens when it's really hot. Although, the lower the pressure around you, the less heat you need. In space, there's pretty much no pressure, and it can be very, very cold, which probably seems obvious. So, does the water boil, or does it freeze? Believe it or not, it does both. It's pretty crazy. Astronauts have seen this happen while watching their pee get shot into space. It immediately boils, and then the vapor passes pretty quickly after that into a solid state. So it goes from liquid pee, to pee gas, to very tiny pee crystals. Unfortunately for us, no astronauts have filmed this amazing pee show. But there is something that happens back on Earth, which is kind of similar. You've probably seen one of these videos before. It's someone throwing a pot of boiling water into the air on a very, very cold day. The water almost immediately finishes boiling and becomes a gas, which then freezes and turns into ice crystals or snow. Very, very cool. Also disclaimer, don't do this in regular weather because that boiling water will probably go straight up and land on you and you'll be burned. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel because we've got plenty more on the way. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to ABC Education too and check out their website. They're both absolutely packed with great resources for students, parents and teachers.